Right, um, hi. Well, what, what we're doing here is recording um, venipuncture and cannulations. This is the first part, and we're talking about the equipment that you need for venipuncture. So, obviously, it's important to make sure you've got your PPE, so your appropriate gloves, make sure they fit properly, and you must wear gloves for these procedures. It's not an opt out, it's essential. Um, that you've got some hand gel as well, so when you're selecting your veins, you can clean your hands thoroughly first as well as having, having washed them. You'll need a kidney dish to put all your bits and pieces in, technical term there, and you'll obviously need a vaquette um, or whatever is used in practice. Now, it might vary in your clinical area, but this is obviously what we normally use when we're taking blood um, and you need your blood bottles. So make sure before you're going to see your patient that you have got all the blood bottles that you need. Check that the doctor or practitioner has added more blood samples, more tests, more requirements because it's awful if you have to stab your patient twice to so make sure you've got everything that you need and all the relevant blood bottles and pop those in. What you do need to do as well is check expiry date, check the equipment is always intact, there's no damage to it, so have a good look at the bottles and make sure um, they're suitable for use for your patient. So again, exactly the same with your vaquette, check that it's, it's um, in date, packaging sealed, and before you actually use it, I'll talk through that when I'm doing the procedure, um, you check that everything is, is work in working order, but check your expiry on, on that as well and that it's all okay. If you're going to use a butterfly device, this is, again, check the it's intact, check the expiry date, um, and again, when you, before you come to use it, check everything's in on working order. So again, this is the kit we're going to use for this. You need a tourniquet, obviously. In clinical practice, we use disposable ones, as you can see here. Um, but I might demonstrate today with one of these, but the principle is the same. You must have a tourniquet when you're doing this, these are these procedures. It's absolutely essential. You can't manage it without. So make sure you've got those as well. You do need to clean your skin, um, or the skin of your patient, I should say. But what's really important to do is check hospital uh, policy and procedure. Um, most procedures say that you've got to clean the skin and you've got to allow it to air dry. And you can either use a good old Sturette, again, check your expiry date, or chloroprep, it's up to you. Um, and again, I'll show you how to use both of those as we're doing the procedures. Afterwards, when you remove the needle, you will need something just to press against uh, your little wound, for want of a better term, and, and it stops bleeding. So you can use cotton wool, that's fine, or you can use gauze, maybe not as much as that, but just a little bit of gauze as well. So that's all the equipment that you require. And then obviously the most important thing that you need now is your patient. Hiya, and now this is the procedure that we're going to do. So, uh, my lovely patient here, Mark Weekly, who you may know, has kindly volunteered to be um, to let me take some blood from him using the vacutainer and the butterfly. So, first of all, if Mark were my patient, I would be explaining what I'm going to do. Thank you, Mark, for letting me come and take blood from you today. My name is Ari, I'm one of the nurses. Um, what I'm just going to do is sort of palpate, feel the veins, and then I'm going to pop just a very small needle and take some blood from him. Just the doctor's asked for some blood tests. Are you all right with that? Yes. Do you have a needle phobia or anything no. I should be aware of? So you're quite happy for me to go ahead and do that? Yeah. Great. That's lovely. What I'm just going to do first of all um, is have a, is put some hand gel on. I wash my hands in the sink. I'm just going to put some gel on. Just to locate the vein, palpate the vein. Uh, obviously when I take your blood, I'm going to wear gloves because that's just what we have to do as a safe practice. And what I should have done, spot the obvious mistake, is remove, remove, removed even my rings. So um, just imagine they're not there. Um, so we're going to palpate, and with the vein, it's important that you can actually not just visualise it, uh, but actually just palpate, and, and you press down, and you should feel it rebound back. And we have one there. By the time I put the tourniquet on, that will come to the surface more, so I'm going to aim to go there. This is the antecubical fossa area, and it's important to stay quite medial in the middle. If you go too lateral down the sides there, you can be at risk of hitting some of the nerves, um, and we don't want to do that. So normally the veins you want are in this area here. Okay, so this is where we're going to take blood using the vacutainer um, and you can, or you can use the butterfly in that area as well, but I'm probably going to use, do that on the back of Mark's hand if he doesn't mind me doing that. So I've got my gel on, I'm just going to pop my tourniquet on just to um, bring the vein up a little bit. You should never leave a tourniquet on for very long just because it can be uncomfortable. Please tell me if that's too tight. No, that's Are you alright with that? It's yeah. nipping you. And just to give that, you know, a couple of minutes to come up uh, and then hopefully it should be easier to palpate. Yeah, that's coming up a little bit there. That's lovely. So once that's on and you're happy, the next thing I'm going to do is clean. I am going to put my gloves on before I actually do anything more invasive. 
um, and the claw prep. You, um, it's a double case, if, not, if you haven't seen it before, you squeeze it and it breaks, hopefully, yep, it does, and it infuses down into the gauze, and you just clean over the area that you're going to, obviously, take the sample from. And what you should do now is leave that alone. Don't go back, don't keep prodding it, leave it to air dry. Um, otherwise, if you touch it, you've got to clean it again, and you could be here all day. So while that's cleaning, and as, as long as you feel comfortable, Mark, your yeah, eyes okay? Absolutely. If so your light's going to drop off or anything, no. good. That's reassuring. I'm going to put my gloves on. You've got to wear gloves for these procedures. If you've seen in practice people saying, "Oh, I don't like to wear them. I can't feel any feel anything," that, to be honest, is inappropriate. It's not professional and it's risky. Your policy states you have to wear gloves because you are touching blood, blood, and uh, there's a risk to yourself and your patients, you must do that. Okay, so I'm not gonna to touch it again. I've got that on there. So you open your equipment. Again, make sure you've got a bag to throw your equipment away. And I should have said with the equipment earlier that you must have a sharps box nearby. Check everything's working order, which is unsheath your needle. Make sure your equipment is nearby. So you've got everything handy and you have your bevel up so you can see the little hole is facing up the way there um, and you've got your uh, grey bit, excuse me, that obviously where the bottles are pierced um, and it's important that you put the needle in first, don't attach the, vac the container because it's vacuumed already so just put, have the needle there, okay? I'm going to stand up to do this because I find that easier and I am just going to, because I've got my gloves on now, I'm going to touch that there and are you alright then? Mark? Yep. Just a sharp. Up, scratch going in there. And you get a flashback there. You can see we've got a flashback there. Lovely. And I swap hands. Then I'm going to put my bottle on. Put your fingers like that and push the bottle. And you should find that the blood comes out nicely. Oh, you've got lovely red blood there. Beautiful. Fill it right to the brim. I'm not going to do that because this is a demonstration purpose. But just hold the bottle. Push your thumb against the vacuum container so your needle has to stay nice and still. When you're practicing, get in the habit of doing it a couple of times. So there. And again, hold that firmly. I'm very gently resting on Mark's arm so my, my um, hand is steady and the needle's steady because what can happen is the needle can go in and out and you don't want that to happen. So again, holding the, the blood bottle, pushing against the vacutainer and you're happy you've got that. You then release the tourniquet, you get your piece of gauze or cotton wool and you don't press on it because the needle's in there and you'll damage Mark's arm or anybody's arm, so you're just going to hold it over and gently remove the needle and firmly apply pressure. And then with this, you can see you click it on and you sheath the needle so it's safe and you put it straight to disposal. You don't put it back in your kidney dish, you don't stick it anywhere else, you put it straight away for safety reasons. And you just press on that, and again, if your patient's able, which Mark is, he can just press on it. Don't get the patient to do that to fold because it actually makes the hole a little bit bigger and causes more problems. So, and then you just that gets pressed on and then we put a plaster on when we're ready. Okay. Thank you. Right, part two, so we've got that. I'm going to use our butterfly um, device with the vacutainer on, which again you, you'll see in, in clinical areas. You can use this not just in the back of the hand, but you can use it in antecubical fossa. Uh, people use it in all different areas. It's really just a preference of type of equipment you like to use. Unless your policy states you've got to use a certain uh, piece of kit, it really doesn't matter as long as you're safe and competent at what you do, that's the, the key thing. Again, we've checked, it's all in date, it's all intact, um, and you can see from it again that you've got your vacuum container at the end with your grey bit again for your blood bottles, and you've got your long bit of tubing and your little butterfly needle at the end. Um, so, what we do is your wings have to be up, so you can see where the the patterned bit is there, that's the, the uh, inferior part, and where the holes are there, that's the the superior part, the upper part, so that you, I tend to hold it like that um, to manipulate it and move it. So I'm not going to unsheath it yet because obviously what we do, we're going to obviously want to find a vein. We've got some lovely ones in the back of the hand here, no problems there at all. I'm going to pop a tourniquet on again, just lower down obviously, you all right with that? Mm -hmm. um, and as we talked through before, Mark has consented, he knows what I'm doing and why, so I don't need to repeat all of that, it's the same as before. I'm going to clean the vein and they're all to pick anyone really can't they are rather lovely so let's give them a bit of an area a bit clean there super 
Uh, and we need that to air dry as well. So make sure you've got your gauze, you've got your blood bottles, um, tourniquet is on and you've got, so I'm gonna unsheath this and just show you it. So you can see that again, it's exactly the same in that your bevel has to be up. So it's a much smaller needle, good for, if people haven't got great veins, good for, for children, not that you'll be gonna be doing that, um, but it's good for older people, etc. So these can be a really useful device. Um, your hand has to be below, so if Mark doesn't mind, I'm just going to hold his hand slightly. Um, actually, just rest it on there, you'll be fine. And again, that looks as though it's air dry now, so that's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to insert the needle. I think I'm deciding I'm going to go into that one. Sharp scratch. Well done, that's lovely. And just insert it along, that's great. And you can see again, we get a flashback. Don't put the needle all the way in and keep it up at a little angle there, okay? And then what you wanna do is put your blood bottle on there and push, and you can see, because you've got the vacuum, it comes down the tube and into the container. Again, I'm not gonna take all of Mark's blood, bless him. So we'll just swap it over and again, hold your, the bottle and push it. I tend to do it like that and push it on. And you've got a nice red, lovely healthy looking blood coming out there. So once it's full, um, in practice, the, the containers have to be full to capacity. Again, hold the bottle, push against it. It doesn't matter so much because you've got the tubing and you're not gonna make, move the needle. So once you're happy you've got those, again, you release your tourniquet and you get your piece of gauze. And again, it's not, you can see because the vacuum's off, it's not, there's no more blood coming out, we're fine. And again, don't press on the needle, hold it over and remove it and press firmly. You all right there, Mark? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, lovely. These actually uh, sh do sheath, yeah. So if you press that bit there and push it up, it does sheath for safety. But if you and end up having a battle with it, don't worry, just put it straight into your sharps and dispose of it. Again, apply some pressure, um, pop some tape on, or put a plaster on once it's stopped. And, and obviously thank your patient, clear all your equipment away. Your bottles must be labelled next to your patient. So if this were in practice, I'd make sure I had my stickers, I would document, because if you go to the nurse's station, risk is, there's the patient's bloods there and we could get it wrong. And I don't think Mark or your patient would be very impressed if you came back and said, I'm really sorry you have to do that again. It doesn't do much for their confidence and faith in you. So make sure you label it by the patient, uh, document it thoroughly, because obviously that's your legal requirement. Um, and just reassure your patient and check the comfortable. Thank you.